disembodied apparitions, physical attacks, demonic voice recordings, electronic malfunctions, possessions, and thousands more of documented cases of evil. Waverly Hills is considered to be the most haunted location in America. 100 years of terror rained upon the five-story building, isolated deep within the trees. After five years of wanting to come here for a paranormal investigation, it finally happened. And what happened in our one night will live with us forever. Waverly, <laughs> this is wild. wild. Wow. People have been pulled here. People have been scratched here. People have been moved. We're just gonna casually go past this. Did you just hear that? What's happening? You just heard that all of a sudden? Hello? Oh, that You're saying there's a spirit that has the ability to press that lock in? Yeah. But he came in the room behind her and he attacked her. She was a virgin until then. Feel free to come inside this room. Over 500 videos, this has never happened. Whoa, there's something like the wall at the very bottom and it flashes. Is that you? Are you here with us? Leave the room. But this thing stepped away from the column and then it started walking toward me. That's all I remember. I woke up at home the next day. What? Three o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. What the f is that? Oh my god. This is crazy. Oh, I just saw it. Yeah. Oh, it's on the ceiling, dude. It looked like there's something extra in the picture. So they took the negative back. Uh, whoa. Stop. Man, emotions have <laughs> you, that was you. F you, that was you. TFIL <laughs> presents. Overnight Channel Special Episode. Waverly Hills, Evil Lives Forever. Hey everyone, there might be a super cool, really awesome announcement that might be happening in the next minute or so right now about something super cool that we could be doing in August or September of this year. But before we get into the two and a half hour video from Waverly Hills that was on the TFIL channel in 2021, I want to give a big shout out and thank you to our sponsor, Omaze. They give away amazing prizes and experiences all while donating money to various chosen charities all around the world. And their sustainable approach to fundraising means that nonprofits can spend less time and money money raising funds and instead focus on serving the needs of their communities. And right now, Omaze has a $100,000 cash prize that you can win right now. Yes, literally $100,000 that you can use to plan out your future, go on an amazing ghost hunting trip, pay off your debt, go back to school, whatever it is that you could ever think to do with it, you can win the $100,000 right now if i had like a hundred thousand dollars right now that i could use towards something super cool for the overnight channel maybe it would be like something in august or september you know this year that involves 26 cities and like a, a tour to all these different famous haunted places that you guys could join and hang out we could all have like a super great time like maybe that's something i would do i don't know but what would you guys want to do with a hundred thousand dollars right now if you had it but the best part is no matter what by using omaze you're supporting an amazing charity such as journey house and journey house supports former foster and probation youth to live more independent successful lives and that is exactly what your generosity will go towards from omaze for your chance to win one hundred thousand dollars and support the amazing charity journey house go to omaze.com slash overnight but of course enjoy this two and a half hour video from a location that may or may not be part of the August, September tour thing that I'm planning. Maybe that's why we're posting this video uh, because that's maybe a hint of what's gonna be happening. And also uh, we'll have more videos soon. The brand new videos, the brand new investigations that we have in store for you will be starting on March 24th. And that will be Winchester Mystery House, uh, USS Hornet, uh, Preston Castle, Kennedy Mines, Queen Mary, where maybe or maybe not, we brought a bunch of witches who tried to get me possessed, and maybe they did, maybe they didn't, we don't know. And then of course, Whaley House, and then after that, we have all of our locations already going. So the editing is happening, videos are coming out. I appreciate you all for watching. Thank you again, Omaze, for sponsoring this video. And appreciate you all. Enjoy the video, Waverly Hills. Love it, stoked to be back. Glad to have this video on the channel. Okay.
See you later. Bye. What's up, everyone, and welcome back to TFIL. This video, this location mm. has been five years in five years in the making. Five. Five whole years in the making. That's a lot of years. Waverly Hills. If anyone doesn't know, TFIL stands for the list. There's a list of a thousand things I want to do before I die. Number 66.6 .6 on the list is stay overnight at Waverly Hills. We are doing it, we are sleeping here. We have this entire place until around noon tomorrow. Great. Oh, I'm, so <laughs> I'm so excited. It's around 200,000 square feet. I believe it's six stories total. It's six stories? It's six stories. The body chute is here, we have access oh, to. We what? have access to the fifth floor, room 502. Also my understanding is they're giving us access to places that no one has been to in a decade. <laughs> Why do people do that? For us? that Why do people do that? Yeah, no. Are we allowed to go yeah. in those places? Wait. We're, we're meeting. Yeah, we're meeting up with Ernie, who's our going to be our guide, historian, <laughs> paranormal investigator, who's going to give us a tour, and he has the keys. Okay. And I wonder is, why people haven't been able to go in there this for 12 like years. A, it's not like a we're we're debating on reopening this part of the building. Yeah. So we're gonna send you guys in. To yeah. See <laughs> if they fall through the floor, then we'll keep, we'll, it, we'll shut keep it shut down. You guys can't breathe. So. Waverly. <laughs> this is wild. Nice. Wow. Wow. I have only seen pictures and pictures and pictures and a couple other videos here. There's a big girl. Each oh. one of us has our own patio. Yeah. They would literally leave all the patients out on those balconies and give them sunlight therapy, ultraviolet therapy, in hopes that that was going to cure their lungs and their tuberculosis. You do know this is the most haunted location in America. Yeah. And possibly in the world. Yeah. It's top three in the world. It is undisputably the most haunted location in the United States. That's wild because we've been to some gnarly places so far. And mm -hmm. the fact that this is above all of them. Uh, significantly above all of them. And there's the quarter mile long body chute where they secretly took out all of the deceased patients and took them to a railroad track because they didn't want to let any of the other living patients know that people were dying what? every single day. I thought that was like a Wait, parachute what? of body. No. That's what they did? It's a quarter mile long and it connects from the building underground to the nearby local train to sneak track. out all the dead bodies. Because they, they figured that if the patients here knew how often other people were passing away, it would ruin their morale. And they wanted to keep their spirits and their mental health as high as possible. They built this place because they put it on the top of the hill, right? This is one of the highest points of the Louisville area, okay. and they put it up here so they could completely isolate anyone with tuberculosis. And as soon as people had it, they would bring them here and they could never see their family or loved ones ever again. Wow. This was the only way they could stop the spread of TB was by bringing them up here and keeping them completely isolated. Oh, it was also a geriatric center at one point, and they've done a lot of experimental like medical treatments on people. They used to uh, cut them open, uh, ex like take out the ribs and their muscles to help their lungs Ooh, be able what? to contract more. I thought this was for tuberculosis. They're doing more stuff. Well, no, that's how they, they didn't know how to cure it. So they, they knew that the lungs needed more oxygen. So they would do experimental treatments. They would cut open their rib cages, remove their muscles. So their lungs would have more area to expand and take in more oxygen. That's insane. And then when it became a geriatric center in the 60s, then they started doing electroshock therapy. There's a lot of experimental treatments here. Probably lobotomies? I don't know actually. That one I don't, yeah, I don't know about that one. Here. You can get on lobotomies me. Um, we should go inside and investigate. Yeah, honestly, we should meet up with Ernie. I'll say this though, before maybe I give the history of Waverly Hills, yeah. cause I already feel like I've given too much. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys wanna fill in the blanks? Yeah, no, I actually, re yeah, I remember what happened here. Back in 1880s, Mm. is when tuberculosis came around. People came here because they needed some help, obviously, obviously right? Yeah. These people started to get powers and they started to be known the wizards of Waverly Hills. 70 years later, Disney Channel comes around and they realized we can we can do something off of this. This will this will work. Where's your voice? Like, I don't know, Elton. <laughs> I don't know. Corey, what do you know about? The year was 2016. <laughs> Young Justin Russo walked through the doors of Richard of Waverly Place. The year was 1642 when the wizards entered the Waverly Place. Brandon? 
I think he covered it. No, I, I think it was. I think he missed some information. <laughs> what, what? Which one? What was the year? 1984. <laughs> the year was 1984. The Great Knights walked into the wings of the Rainbow Prize. <laughs> I waited four years to do this, <laughs> huh? You know this place so well, why don't you tell them? All right, well, if you guys want to learn more about Waverly Hills, here's some information. It is considered to be the most haunted location in America, but yet, like most places, was never built to have that title. Instead, it was built out of desperation in an effort to help the tuberculosis pandemic that affected over 10 million people worldwide. By the end of the 1800s, 25% of all deaths in the United States were caused by the airborne bacterial disease that viciously ate away at the lung tissue of its carrier. And so the warm and wet weather of Kentucky lent itself to be the perfect breeding ground, causing an absolute breaking point in capacity for all hospitals in the area. A new large location for patients was in dire need, and this is where the story unfolds for the haunting terror of Waverly Hills. In 1910, it was a quaint two-story building that could hold 50 patients, and by 1926, the expansion created a five-story, 400-bed isolated compound to house the dying. Yet in those years between, tuberculosis was still on a lethal rampage, and hospitals continued to be beyond capacity. Patients from the city hospitals were sent to Waverly Hills and issued tents on the grounds as they awaited the completed construction. This included adults and children alike. Sitting atop a hill, far from the nearest residence, it served as a perfect quarantine location to prevent any further infections. The residents of Waverly raised animals for meat, produced their own food, ran a functioning post office with their own zip code, and even had their own currency. Once you entered the property line, it was rather likely you would never leave. For 40 years, Waverly Hill saw nothing but pain, suffering, and death from adults and children, from families torn apart, and families that passed away together. Not a day went by without a life being taken. Documents that held the true number of patients lost at Waverly are gone, leading some to believe only 8,000 died within the harrowing halls, with the vast majority believing the total was nearly 60,000. To help alleviate the mental struggle of witnessing such tragedy by those fighting for their own lives, the 500-foot-long tunnel was created, now known as the Body Chute. Staff would secretly remove the dead through this tunnel, hour after hour, and it was directly connected to the train tracks, where they would be taken away forever. In 1961, the tuberculosis facility was closed, but shortly after reopened as a geriatric hospital and housing for the mentally ill. Mistreatment was the bare minimum patients received, and after 20 years of neglect, understaffing, and overcrowding, it was finally closed. The forms of mistreatment and horror stories that took place throughout the entire facility for over a century, including those that happened on the fifth floor, will be told to us tonight by our guide, where demonic figures have instantly possessed visitors. That even through the tales of darkness and hauntings, he tells us what might be one of the most beautiful stories we have ever heard. After five years of wanting to investigate at the infamous Waverly Hills, we are finally here. Because Waverly Hills is actually on the f***ing list, we have decided to put the video on this channel. Please, make sure to check out our overnight channel, dedicated to finding proof of the paranormal. So please make sure to subscribe there, as we have brand new investigations and locations every week. TFIL will continue to post adventures from around the world as well. The year was 1214! 2,000 dinosaurs created this building with the cast of a spy! Rumor has it on top of the building is Mark! What do you do with the tour later? You just gotta pop out of nowhere <laughs> and be like, well, actually, hey, <laughs> my say Zoom myself. Oh my right, god. Meeting is at the gargoyle. Okay. Oh.
Oh, yeah, he probably has heard everything. Yeah. Yeah, he definitely really? heard everything. Can you imagine they're in there doing an investigation right now? And they're like, what is this demon outside? He's probably going to be impressed that we knew so many facts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we knew all about this place. <laughs> all the years. And to everyone that's watching this video, we're going to need your help on this one. Oh, yeah. Because every possible form of paranormal activity has been documented here. Everything. I mean, everything? people have documented doors being slammed so close to them where absolutely there's no other explanation there's no running power in most of the building and people have seen lights on what? there are known full body apparitions men that are seen in like their doctor's white coat Ugh. there's even children's spirits that are here that are known to move balls around what? in the fifth floor especially around 502 there's known spirits there is so much activity people have been pulled here people have been scratched here people have been moved physically moved here on camera Voices, EVPs, everything. So at any point in time, we should be on high alert for anything that might be happening. Yeah. I mean, we're not even talking about like K2 evidence or, or things like that. We're talking about people have literally been physically moved here and heard things in their ears. Yeah. That there's no other explanation. So like every place we've ever been, but all put together into one. Exactly. Yeah. This is, yeah. The amount of things that our people, that you guys that have watched these videos have found, this is the place where you guys will find something, whether it's audio or whether it's an apparition. Dude. Orbs. Orbs. Yeah. That's right. I mean, to be completely honest, they put up their private investigations here on January 1st. They are sold out January 1st. This what? is one of the hardest locations to get to yourself for the night. <laughs> Jesus what? Christ. So, every single thing is here and we have full access like i said at the end of tonight here at waverly hills we're going to do something we have never done before for a video what's that what is that we'll talk about it later oh my god i know i already i already oh, know i already know oh. at the end of the night i'm going to put tape in every single notable place in this building and at the end of the night we're all going to walk together take every single piece of tape off and we're going to leave the clip entirely uncut Oh. So if it takes us 90 minutes, or if it takes us two hours or three hours, we're gonna film the entire thing. So that's how we're gonna spend the end of the night. I like that. Absolutely nothing hidden, no anything at all. The viewers will get the absolute truest experience of walking around this place as they possibly can. Hey! hey. <laughs> how are y'all? How's it going? Great, man? how are you? Hello, Elton, nice to meet you. Ernie Pack, good to meet you. Brandon. Pleasure. Nice, nice to meet you, Brandon. Corbin. Nice to meet you, man. Nice. Hey. What's his name? Corbin. Corbin. Yep. Oh, Corey. Corey. Yeah, we're the right, Corys. You can just call it, us it, both it, Corys. Uh, yeah. Double Elton, somebody, Corey. somebody, somebody. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's all. That's yeah. we're all good. <laughs> you got the one that matters, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I would, uh, I would act as if we know absolutely nothing about this place, okay. other than I believe it was opened in 1610. Yeah. No. <laughs> No? no, that's, no, no, that's no, weird. No. But that was, what, that was what he told. We got the official tour guide over here that was saying that. Uh, what did you say it was open? Was it 16? Uh... <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, it's open in 1926. Is that right? Exactly. <laughs> 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 I, I told you. Research. I've been here uh, since 2009. I've been here off and on. Uh, You've been coming here way longer, uh, right? I grew up in the neighborhood. Oh, I've never oh, lived wow. more than a bike's ride from this place. Oh, really? I used to sneak in here as a kid. Oh, no way. Wow. Don't do yeah. that anymore. <laughs> no, no. We got <laughs> we got security. They'll shoot you and bury you in the woods. Wow. <laughs> Can we see some? Some of the dead people in yeah. the woods? No, we got them buried. There's do they take them to the woods through the snakes. body chute? Oh, yeah. No, we just, no. They don't give them that honor. No, <laughs> no. they just right over the hill. Exactly. Right there. They didn't the pay to get in the body chute. Oh, yeah. obviously, we believe that this is the most haunted place in America. Would you agree? Yeah, I've been a paranormal investigator and travel around a lot myself. Probably not as many places as you've been, but I've been to a lot of them. And, I mean, I'm biased. Well, what did you see as a kid? Okay. One time we. We came in through the body chute. Because you went inside? You came in through the body chute. <laughs> yeah. Oh. There used to just be a pile of dirt. Back in the 80s, there was a pile of dirt over the end of the body chute. And we had dug it out to where you could crawl, you know, crawl into the body. And it opens up once you yeah. get inside there and you just walk up the body chute into the building. I was at the back of the line. We had one guy up front that had a flashlight. We're coming up the, the tunnel and we hear this loud bang at the back end. Back down at the bottom by where we had come from. We didn't know if somebody was just messing with us or what, but we freaked out and we ran, right? The one guy that had the flashlight drops it. We slam into a concrete wall, feel our way around, and 
figure out our way to go. We slam into a metal door, we feel around on it, figure out finally that it's a roll up door. So we roll it up and come running in. We're on this first floor hallway. We come running down the hallway and we dive into a room and the guy gets out his lighter. You see these trays, the doors. We were in the morgue. Oh. As teenagers, we didn't want to be in the morgue, right? Yeah. So we yeah. freak out again, we run up the steps, we wind up on this balcony right here on the second floor. Yeah. And we duck down. And we're like, I don't know if I was thinking, you know, we're all trying to figure out what the noise was and who was after us and all this, because we could hear, you know, after the bang, it sounded like footsteps coming up behind us. I looked up over the concrete wall across the back side of the building. Yeah. Down there on the third floor, the third window from the end on the third floor, it looked like someone was holding a candle, one of those old candle holders. Mm. You know, and you could see like a face glowing behind yeah. the candle. Yeah. It's like, there's somebody down there, it's security. Just watch, watch. Well, then you see that light just go around the building way faster than anybody could have run. Stop. <laughs> we, we were freaking out. Well, you're saying like the candle light was like running. It was like an orange, I, that's what I, it looked yeah. like was a candle light, but it was like an orange ball. At yeah. Orb. With a face essentially, right? Yeah. Like I say, I'm biased because I grew up here and I love this place. I got a special attachment as you can tell to some of the spirits here. That is um, for the room and not for the area code. Yes, for the room. That room is for 502. room 502. Yes. That's oh. commitment. Huh. Yeah. Wait, we what gotta, What we, made you get that tattooed? Because you want to talk about it now or wait till wait, the we should, we should wait till the Let's room. wait till 502. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited to be here. Oh, oh boy. I'm so excited to be look, here. Look how the stairs are cracked. Oh, this place is so cool. There's a part of me that wants to like go through all of my TFIO videos to every single time I've talked about coming here. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's gotta be like a hundred videos. Yeah. Wait, yeah. Oh, wait, oh, wait, we're just gonna Cadley? <laughs> we're just gonna Cadley? <laughs> no cat myth? Come on. <laughs> what? Waverly Hills opened in 1926. Just like Corey said. Because he knows what he's talking about. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and the, the tuberculosis outbreak around the Louisville, Kentucky area was about as bad as it was anywhere in the country. That's why they needed this big old building here. They started out, this is actually the third building that was built on the property. Huh. There was one built in 1910 that had a 40 bed capacity. It wasn't long until they realized that was not nearly enough. So they started construction on a 140 bed facility down over the hill. Down over that, way. that wasn't enough. So they eventually broke ground for this place in 1924. And look at this place, how big it is. Two years later, they opened it. I can't believe they finished this in two years. That's yeah. incredible. And it, all the brick, you know, I mean, the, yeah. you know, you got masons on scaffolds doing that. That's not prefab yeah. or anything like this today's standards. I mean, this is real work. Well, whoever designed the building did an amazing job of designing it where it caught the maximum sunlight, the way it was faced, catches a breeze and carries it all the way through all of those Solarians out there from to catch their fresh air, mm -hmm. but I think he was high when he designed the movie. Oh, why is that? Three coolers. For They're how? fighting a plague. There were times when 24, 25 people a day were dying in here. These are the only ones. This is it. 24 or 25 people a day. Yeah. There were times during the peaks of the epidemic where it was like one an hour. Ooh. Literally one an hour. Ooh. Yeah. We've, we've been able to document right at about 12,000, just under 12,000, but we feel like the number is probably twice that. And, and your number is double what I found when doing my homework. My homework yeah. came to 6,000. Yeah. Wow. yeah we have, we've, we've got, I think it's like in the neighborhood of 11,800 and some odd wow. that we've been able to tie to. And you think it's double? I think it's probably twice that. The best way to investigate in here, and I'm sure that uh, Corey's going to do it tonight, uh, is to climb in there head first so we can read your toe tag. You, you, how do you know Corey so well? <laughs> it's like, I just got, I, I, I'm a sensitive, I guess. I picked up on it. Run a recorder. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. actually a good idea though. Everybody else leave the area. Just leave him in here yes. for about a half hour. Uh, half hour is probably good. Yeah. Uh, half hour is probably good. Great. Actually, I mean, we're sleeping here anyway, so we do eight hours, right? It's good. It's a good night's sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Eight hours? It's, it's, it's not, I mean, eight hours is a good night's sleep. This is good soft plywood. Think, uh, that's, that's what they say about every master salesman. Yeah. He's like, come on, we got good <laughs> soft plywood. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that makes we sense. We should put his name on it, 
or heaven right is oh yeah you're right right on it so that way we know it's the last one don't hit your head yeah. that way you can't yeah. trick it yeah so does anyone have a pen or anything like that <laughs> I'll, I'll put it in a particular plate. Wait, don't let Corey see where I put it. Oh, okay. he's putting it in, this, in an actual. You can get out of here, Corey. Corey, I'll be honest. It's pretty comfortable in here, buddy. I'm kind of jealous for you later. Swear. I got you. Oh. Oh. Hi, Corey. Well, uh, what usually happens when folks do that uh, after they're in there for a while? It sounds like people walk in. They hear. Shuffling. Sounds like maybe gurney wheels rolling on the floor. Hmm. See these guides here on the wheels? Yeah. yeah. It had rails and there was a ramp that went down inside the tunnel. On the left hand side there's steps that go down. On the right hand side there's a ramp. Well when people were dying at that incredible rate that we talked about, imagine being one of those patients back there getting your fresh air and sunshine treatments and you see hearse after hearse after hearse coming up the hill. So they decided to start getting the bodies out a little bit more discreetly than having a hearse pick them up off the loading dock over here. And they started taking them out through that tunnel. They would lower them down by the cable and pulley system and this thing would ride on the rails. It was Rumor has it, the patients enjoyed this so much, it inspired Six Flags to create a roller coaster. Is that true? That's what we've heard. Wow. Who was that? You think that's Corey, true? Who was that? That's I don't, probably true. I don't know if I believe it. Oh my, I thought you disappeared again. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna keep doing that every room. Let's go in here. The first thing I wanna point out to you guys is that that right there is not a ghost. Okay. A lot of folks will see that and they think, ooh, look, it's a pregnant lady holding her belly. Yeah, it does look like it, yeah. And folks usually just think of tuberculosis as a uh, lung disease, primarily, yeah. But there was also a version, still is, called tubercular meningitis, which is basically TB of the brain. Brain ailments back then, though, were always treated the same way. It didn't matter if you fell off a wagon and busted your head open, they'd give you electroshock therapy. What? So you had tubercular meningitis, they'd give you electroshock therapy. I mean, it's logical. For everything. I mean, that fixes everything. But the worst cases of that would be brought in here over on the other side of the room over there. And they'd be strapped to a bed, a bike block put in their mouth, electrodes attached to their head. They administer the electroshock therapy. Um, don't know if it had any effect whatsoever, but they were trying everything they could. And most of the procedures that were done here were voluntary. It wasn't like this was a torture chamber where they were just experimenting on people. The coolest thing that's ever happened to me in here was back in 2014 when I was given a two-hour tour. Uh, on those we have what we call a tour assistant now. We used to call them cabooses. It's a fellow that'll stay at the back of the line and keep a head count, make sure nobody wanders off into a room and gets lost or anything. And every now and then they'll poke their head in and tell you how many people you got in your group and let you know everybody's all in. This one, one particular night I knew I had 18 people in my group. And I got in here and I start talking about the not a ghost over there. And he sticks his head in and he said, hey, they're all in, you got 19. I said, we had 18. I said, you got 19. So I started counting. And I go around the room and I get to 18 people. But over by that door right over there, there's an old man leaning in the door jam with his arms folded looking down. And it's like he felt all our eyes on him. He looks up, looks around the room, just kind of turns and walks toward the hallway. What? And I was like, wait a minute, shine my light down there. There's nobody there. Your whole tour see that? 20 of us. The what? eight people in my group, my caboose and myself, all saw it, but nobody's running the camera. Yeah. Oh. You know, nobody snaps a picture or anything, but there he was. And this guy's been seen a lot in this area of the building, in this hallway. We think he might be a former maintenance man because he had like a few water keys. Completely, like it was, it was as real person. as you. I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's where it gets insane. We've never heard a story like that. We've heard no. of like yeah. people on tours, like mm -hmm. a single person seeing someone. We've never heard yeah. of a whole tour yeah. group being like, yup. That's yeah. crazy. But it makes yeah. sense why like, no one would have filmed it because, like, why would you film another tour per like, yeah. on a tour? Like, what are you gonna do to that old guy? And, like, yeah. you think he's actually on your tour? Right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, you know, we're just like, wait a minute. We got somebody that's. That's got, incredible. Got away from yeah. another tour or something and wound up with ours or whatever. Oh. 
murder. This room was originally a maintenance room. There were lockers and drill presses and workbenches, things for the maintenance crew in here. That death rate would spike and then morgue would get full and this hallway would be full of gurneys, full of bodies. They finally decided that was a bad idea. So they cleaned all the maintenance gear out of here and they put a freezer back in that corner with fans blowing over blocks of ice and they started storing bodies in here. We've seen pictures of this room lying wall to wall with the dead, maybe a hundred or more. We've gotten some incredible photos in here of full bodied apparitions. Uh, then a couple years ago we got really lucky. A local funeral home had some caskets they needed to get rid of and they donated them to us as props for our haunted house. They're real caskets and they're used caskets. As soon as you started talking when yeah. we came in here, we both heard it. Yeah. It sounded like when a wheel gets like stuck on the floor and it scoots, it's like that. Uh, yeah. It was from that room right, right there. Over really? there. Just as soon as you started talking, it was like, uh, nice. Yeah. Freaked, freaked me out a little bit. Well, well, what's really cool about these caskets is this one down here seems to have come to us with company. We get a lot of hits with paranormal equipment when we place it around here. Mm. I had a group in here a few months ago. They had a big DDR system, so they set up down here. They didn't want to carry everything upstairs. And uh, a couple hours into their investigation, they came upstairs. They got me and my wife, Denise, and they said, somebody's trying to get out of that casket right there. I said, what? Mm -hmm. They said, I'm telling you, somebody's trying to get out of that casket right there. I said, you're kidding. And you know, I could see they were white as a ghost, they, you know, pardon the pun, but I mean, they were scared. And they said, I'm telling you, you need to check it out. Somebody's trying to get out of there. So she comes down here and nothing, nobody was trying to get out of the casket. But by the time I got down here, because I wanted her to, ladies first, you know, yeah. and I'm a gentleman. And so when I got down here, those folks were already down here rolling up their cable, packing all their stuff, and they moved upstairs where you guys are staged. They wouldn't come back in here the rest of the night. Jesus. Something obviously freaked them out. I have been here several times when I'm giving tours, and we'll hear like, you know, well, oh, that kind of thing. Yeah. Pay attention to this. This old shirt. You're gonna want to make sure it stays in this door jam because we got a trickster that's learned to lock that door. Oh. I've had several people locked in here. Really? Oh. Yeah. You're saying there is a spirit that has the ability to press that lock in? Yeah. He hasn't figured out how to pull that shirt out yet, thank goodness. I think I've mentioned it before, but the body chute is 560 feet long. It's at a 45 degree angle. 45 degree angle? What? Yeah, you'll see when we get in there. Um, it's 153 steps. They're spaced awkwardly. It's like step, step, landing, step, step, landing, and so on, all the way to the bottom. Okay. Um, we're standing in zip code 40272. If you go to the bottom, you're in zip code 40258. Ha! Wow. True story. <laughs> Seriously though, I mean, there's not a good reason to go down there other than if Elton makes you. Uh, <laughs> because there's... <laughs> <laughs> if there's any light anomalies that appear in there, you'll see them from the top. It's pitch black once we get around the corner down here. Oh. And, uh, but we do get a lot of activity in there. I had the Louisville FBI SWAT team come in here a few weeks ago. They had rented the place for the night to do a little team building thing. Oh, nice. They came in with their tactical helmets, they had their night vision on, and they all went in through here. Nice. And they're in here about five minutes, and me and Denise here. <laughs> they all come running out. <laughs> they said that they had seen something coming, uh, saw it on the night vision, coming up from the bottom, but it was transparent, and it got close enough where they could actually hear it. These are, these are SWAT, this is the, the, the FBI beast. SWAT team. These Not are the manliest like people. Joe's police force, the FBI SWAT team. <laughs> wow. Oh. Ran out of here. And they ran out. So this was originally built to bring supplies up to build the building, right? Yes. Okay. Oh. Does anyone have a skateboard? Is this well, the whole way down? You, you'll die. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. Bad. Because wow. at the end, there's a concrete wall. Oh my god. This is crazy. Is he really going all the way down? How long is that going to take? I mean, well, how about this? You said the acoustics are really good, right? Yeah, 
So why don't you share all the stories and I'll just be able to hear them all the way down. Well, there's a, uh, there's not a whole lot to tell. Okay, but you got to point a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what we get in here a lot is the footsteps, uh, and you'll hear bangs from in there, uh, voices down there at the bottom when you know there's no one down yeah. there. Uh, something that's really cool about this. Uh, <laughs> from night, a nurse wrote in pencil on here from 1930. Oh, what? See, it's got the date, 1930. There's there's other areas around here where there's old pencil nice. graffiti from back then. Wow. Hurry up, dude. Keep going. You're not even halfway down yet. Have you made it all the way down yet? Oh. <laughs> Here, we're gonna roll the flashlight down. Ready? Oh. Yo, it's the red light. Oh, I moved the red light, dude. Turn that light on right now. Just Wait, is it easier this way? No. Holy. Uh, you know, I think you just need to let your eyes adjust and then you'll be good. Who goes there? Down. Couldn't see. Well, they said there's a concrete there's a, there's wall. There's a concrete wall. Oh, I didn't Did really you see the snakes? snakes? Huh? Snakes? The snakes. He said there's lots of snakes down there. Really? Yeah. Oh. He, he was like, maybe I should have told them before they went down. We could have turned this on. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> what did that be nice? <laughs> You guys want to see it? I'm mean, gonna get it out and show you on my phone. Otherwise, we can look at it later. Whatever you want to do, I'll, I'll look at it right now. Yeah, yeah it's, I'm, it's, it's, crazy. it's crazy cool. I'm definitely not. It's about as creepy as they get. Now remember, there were no windows in the building at the time, and as you can see, we're up on the second floor. Yeah. They were standing right here. Someone was over there and took a picture of them. Back when you had to have a camera and film, when they got the pictures back after having them developed it looked like there's something extra in the picture so they took the negative back had them blow up just that part of the picture wait, 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 wait. whoa Stop. that looks like a girl a girl it, with yeah a i got it. everything don't eye say eye. it looks like jack sparrow yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and they were standing really right here and then oh. right there no window and there's no balcony right there you can see the balcony ends yeah wow, wow. This is where you were standing, right? When you saw the figure? Yeah. When we saw the light anomaly. Uh, how crazy, how f full circle that would wow. be if it just happened yeah, again. Happen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Real nice. Gotta take some pictures before we leave. I don't know if you guys are like me at all, but paranormal investigation is something that, uh, for me, I had done it for a long, long time. But I didn't really tell a lot of folks about it because you were considered a weirdo if you did it. You know what I'm saying? Definitely, yeah. Uh, but when the TV show Ghost Hunters came out and became real popular, that kind of changed things for a lot of us. And, you know, it kind of brought things into the mainstream a little bit more. Yeah, And definitely. you weren't such a weirdo if you were a ghost hunter. The number one episode, I'm told, of any paranormal show that's ever filmed, ever aired, is that first one that they filmed here with Ghost Hunters. That's the one, if you remember, where they caught the FLIR footage of a figure running across the hallway. Any of y'all remember that? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. It's, I was like 13 cool. when I saw that. You saw that? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's cool. It's I wasn't here when they filmed that, but uh, I now know, because I've been here with the team since then, 
that they were standing right down there. If you watch that episode, you'll see where it says away over that doorway right there. You see how it says that? You can't hardly read it from here, but that's oh, what it says. You see that? What? I think it's a bat. Yeah, probably. They were standing down there shooting this way with the flare camera, and the figure had come out and run right to left across the hallway. And it would come from this room right here. So let's go in here real quick and talk about this one. There was a lady that came here by the name of Audrey Lindsay. And a short time after she was here, her younger sister Lois, who'd already been married, her name was Lois Higgs, uh, got sick with tuberculosis. And she was sent to Waverly. They put the two of them both in this room. Lois was here for four years. She got better, recovered, was sent home. While she was out, she got pregnant with her second kid and was sent back to Waverly Hills, back to this room with her sister. When it was time for her to deliver her son, she was transported to another hospital downtown. She gave birth. They separated the two immediately because they didn't want her to pass the disease on to him. Yeah. She came back here. The boy went home with family. There's one time that we know of that the family brought her, both of her sons out here to the grassy area down below. And Lois could come out here, look out the screened in area, down and blow him kisses, tell him she loved him. But Lois died at the age of 28 when that youngest son was just five without ever getting out of here, basically. Yeah. Um, and a lot of times we get an EVP out of this room. It's, it's very similar every time. Audrey. Mm. Audrey. Audrey. Like Lois is calling out to her sister in the bed across the room from her. Last year, though, something happened that for people who are goofy like me, like every night when I come through and lock up at the end of the night, like when you guys leave tonight, I'll yeah. I say goodnight to Lois. I'll say goodnight to Audrey, you know. I say goodnight to all of them that I know their names in here. Yeah. Last year, a group got that same EVP, but at the end, there was a reply. Yes, Lois. What? Audrey didn't die here. Audrey lived until 1996. But somehow those two sisters are having their midnight conversations here in the huh. now, which I think is pretty cool. I mean, I actually kind of... Yeah. All of these nurses' stations are really active. We get a lot of full-bodied apparitions of nurses walking in and out of them. But that one down there in particular, we get a lot of full-bodied apparitions of nurses walking in and out. People mm. see it, hear it, tape. <laughs> So I encourage you guys to spend a little bit of time just watching around there. Yeah. Keep your cameras pointed that way because you never know. Show you another photo. Ooh, Are we yeah. caught in a fourth floor children's ward. I think you'll I think you'll see what I'm talking about. It's a doctor. You can see he's got a stethoscope slung over his shoulder. He's got a headlamp like they used to wear back in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see his trench coat comes down below the the window, so it's not all just pareidolia from the yeah. window. You know, reflect light coming through the window, whatever. But uh, I'll go around and show everybody. Oh, wow. Who took that photo? That was one of our guests about a month and a half ago. Oh, uh, oh that was pretty recent. I don't know if uh, he'd want me to give you his Check name, that. but uh, I can. Where's the doctor with a mask? Fourth floor, children's ward, all the way at the south end down there. Like I've mentioned, I grew up in this neighborhood. I've never lived more than a bike's ride from the building. I'm yeah. about three minutes away right now. Used to hang out along Dixie Highway, which is the road that runs along the bottom of the hill down there. I can remember a lot of times seeing a guy walking along the railroad tracks down there that runs along Dixie Highway. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a big guy, kind of bent over, had long stringy dark hair and a bushy beard. He uh, had a white dog that would tag along behind him. A white dog? Yeah. Oh. Looked like a white German Shepherd. Uh, later learned this guy was a homeless Vietnam veteran his name was William, and he was living in this room right here. Uh, the building was abandoned at the time. They had no security at all. Yeah. And the owners of the property at that time, they were going to auction off all the equipment that was in right. here and scrap the place out as much as they could, yeah. use that money to have the building torn down and build the world's largest Jesus statue here on top of the hill. What? The what? largest Jesus statue? Yeah. They found out they had a homeless guy that was staying here. They thought he might be part of the problem. So they came up here and they were gonna kick him out. It was late November, William already had a Christmas tree set up in the corner of the room, and he was taking really good care of it. I mean, he was really clean in there and neat. They talked to him and he said, look, I'm not stealing anything, I'm just trying to stay in out of the weather. Mm -hmm. If you guys let me stay, I'll have to keep the people out of here that are. So they let him stay. Every now and then they'd bring him food, they'd bring him blankets, clothes, you name it. One night though, he ran into some guys I had gone to high school with. William and Sadie were beaten to death with a claw hammer. What? 
Their bodies were found a couple of months later down at the bottom of the elevator shaft. Of course, the bodies weren't found for a couple of months. It took even longer for the kids to be tied to the crime. So there's no newspaper article or news story about it, anything like that, you know, because all the time, and then the fact that the juvenile records are sealed. Yeah. You know, so it all just kind of huh. is forgotten in time. Why? If I hadn't known family members You've seen him. of some of them yeah. and known who he was, I wouldn't have known anything about it. All those guys, though, after their short stint in juvie, they were released and they spent years in and out of jail for different reasons. Mm -hmm. They all wound up dead along the railroad tracks at the bottom of the No. Wait, 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 wait. Two of them, they ruled suicide by train. Uh, the third guy was just found dead near the tracks, blunt force trauma. They thought he might have been hit by a train. They don't know. William still tells people to get out of here every now and then. Ooh. I got a picture of William that was caught right over there 30 years after he was murdered. And, I mean, I can send you that. I can show you guys that. It didn't look like the beard, the... Let me show you. I want to see this. Let me show you. No way. There's no way. No way. Yeah, that's what I was saying. No way. Who took that? That was one of our guests uh, about... Uh, that's him. Six or seven years ago. That's him. Yeah. Like right here. That is crazy. That's actually one of the craziest pictures I've seen. Ooh. From how you explained, you looked and you're showing us that. Yeah. Okay, I got. I actually got some chills. Right. So for the first time, we need to be taking pictures. Yeah. And everything is happening. We have We've to. We've actually take never pictures. done that. We've never had like the REM pod go off. Yeah. And then take a picture of the REM pod. True. Take, we've That's actually it. never done that. That is we so. We should have brought the Polaroid. Polaroid. You know what's funny? Oh. Is I actually bought two Polaroid cameras to bring on this trip, and I forgot them. No. And I and I bought walkie-talkies so we can talk to each no. other to get too far apart. <laughs> Probably the most famous bathroom in Louisville, Kentucky, is room 502. Um, the bathroom and shower room that served this ward over here. The story that's been told for years about room 502 is based on hearsay. It's passed down to former management here that uh, a maintenance man came up the elevator one morning to go to work. And when he got off the elevator, he found a nurse hanging from an old light fixture, which used to be right here. The story goes on to say this nurse had been having an affair with a married doctor. Oh. That she had gotten pregnant, might have even contracted TB, decided she needed to have an abortion because she couldn't fight the disease and raise her, you know, have a pregnancy going on at the same time her body wouldn't be strong enough. Mm -hmm. So she gave herself an abortion and then got really depressed about everything and came out here, tied a bed sheet around her neck, around the light fixture, climbed onto a chair and hung herself. The only thing that we know that's factual is that a nurse was found hanging from the light fixture. But it never made a lot of sense to me. Over here was a 14 bed ward for those patients with tubercular meningitis. Mm. Remember the young adults mm -hmm. and kids with the TB of the brain? Electroshock therapy. The sickest of the sick with that were kept up here. Mm. Over there was a 14 bed ward for children 12 and under with stage five tuberculosis. Remember we were in the body shoot, I told you that a nurse or an orderly would go down with each body that was taken down? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was an orderly's job, mm. but a lot of times they forced the nurses to do it because they didn't want to have to walk back up them steps. Mm -hmm. Of course, as you guys might understand, after doing it once, if you had to do it 20 times a day, it's a it wouldn't be no fun. If you worked here, you were confined here. You were quarantined here just as if you were a patient yourself. Couldn't leave for any reason. It never made any sense to me, even though I had to tell the story, and I did for years, that someone who answered that calling would come out here in plain view of these really sick kids and hang herself. No, it doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. In 2009, when I started hosting these private overnights, I had a group that had rented the building for the night. It was just three guys. And they had all their equipment laid out here. And they were asking questions. Why did you kill your baby? Who was the doctor you were sleeping with? Did you know his wife? You know, things like that. I sat down over there by the elevator door. I said, hey, my name's Ernie. I'm gonna be spending a lot of time up here with you guys. You in particular, ma'am, I want to know your story. Um, I don't believe the story I have to tell about you is the truth about what happened that night. If you'll help me, I promise I'll tell everybody I come in contact with up here your story. Right then, a tiny little female voice from right over there, the door to room 504, said Sarah. But that started a whole new line of questions and what's now over 12 years of me coming up here every chance I get having conversations with Sarah. 
mm -hmm. and piecing her story together a little at a time. In 2019, I hosted a group uh, that was here for a private overnight, and I had told my version of Sarah's story as I had it up to then. And there's a lady in the group that's just sitting there nodding her head and grinning the whole time. When I got done, she pulled me aside. She said, you're the first person that's ever had the same information I've got. I said, what do you mean? She said, I've been coming here two, three, four times a year since 2009 myself. And I've got the name Sarah, and I got the rest of the story that you got. It's all the same. Huh. And uh, so we started talking a lot. She, she was living in Hendersonville, Tennessee. She started coming up every chance she had, and we'd investigate here together. We'd go downtown and do research at the Filson Club, things like that, try to piece together whatever we could about Waverly in general, but in particular up here. Yeah. And eventually we wound up married. I it's all serious. <laughs> I felt that coming on. I, I, yeah. I, yeah. It's I all know. serious. That, that's great, man. Wow. Uh, but we started our own paranormal team, started doing a podcast. Wow. And people, you know, we would tell Sarah's story on our podcast. But basically, Sarah had grown up. She was the youngest kid in her family. She grew up not too far from here. She had an older sister she adored. Her older sister caught tuberculosis, wound up dying at the age of 15. Hmm. When she got the chance to come to work at Waverly Hills, it was a dream come true. Yeah. There was no place better or more respected anywhere around than Waverly in those days. So they put her up here on the night shift working with these sick kids, and she loved it. Uh, this was heaven to her. I know that because I've asked her several times, why aren't you in heaven? Her answer is always, this is heaven, or this was heaven. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, yeah, it makes sense. Anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> she was here for three years. One night she's working alone on the night shift in room 504. Another staff member must have come up the steps because she never heard the elevator bell ding, but she had known someone was here. Mm -hmm. But he came in the room behind her and he attacked her. She didn't want to wake the kids, so she didn't scream, but she did try to fight back. Mm -hmm. But she was too little, he was too strong, yeah. he got what he wanted. Mm -hmm. Several teams have heard that over and over. She was a virgin until that night. He raped her. Somewhere in the process, he hurt my neck. I heard that over and over and over too. They lied. They covered it up. Mm -hmm. Stop the lies. Help me. Help me. Help me. Things that we've gotten over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And that makes a lot more sense than the story. I mean, when you think about the big mm -hmm. picture, really, it yeah. makes a lot more sense than the story that's been told. Yeah. Wow. And it's 18 different teams from around the world that have gotten this stuff. I'm gonna show you guys a really creepy picture when we get down here. And we'll make this stop on the fourth floor fairly short. But uh, this, to me, is probably the most haunted hallway in the world. Really? Yeah. Say that again? It's the what a hall? Probably the most haunted hallway in the world. One more time? <laughs> Probably the most haunted hallway in the world. The guys finished for the night once and they had sent everyone home, they thought. They were getting ready to go home. They heard banging and screaming coming from inside the building. They thought maybe someone had you know, wandered off from a tour and gotten locked in. But they double checked and everyone had signed out. There was no car in the parking lot, nothing like that. So they figured, well, maybe we got trespassers. Because back then they used yeah. to get them a lot and they'd actually get in the building. It doesn't happen anymore made their way up here to this landing following those noises. And on the other side of this door were some teenage boys. And instead of running away like trespassers usually do, they were reaching through the door begging to be let out yeah. and apologizing for breaking in and saying they wouldn't do it again, just please let us out. The guide was like, what do you mean? Huh. They're all around us, they won't let us leave. Who's all around you? The shadows. They had broken in by chopping through a boarded up window down on the first floor with a hatchet. The banging that the guy had heard was them using the same hatchet trying to get through this door. But anyway, the guy came over here with one finger, pulled the door open. And the kids came spilling out here, begging not to go to jail, please, you know, we won't come back, we're sorry, blah, blah, blah. And they were just like, get out of here, go. Yeah. Then the guy pushed the door open the rest of the way and he felt that. Oh, what? They had been chopping at that door with that hatchet. Oh. But they couldn't get out. You see that? 
I think that uh, the spirits wanted them caught. Wow. And didn't didn't let them leave. Dude. Wow. Whoa. But I feel like Waverly is the most haunted place I've ever been. And I feel like this is the most haunted hallway there is. Uh, there are shadow figures everywhere in here. Once you get a chance to go lights out in here, let your eyes get adjusted to the darkness, you'll see them coming in and out of the doorways, up and down the hall. It's, it's crazy out there. All right, this room was the main OR. There were two bays in here, one on each side. Oh, wow. The procedure that was done in here was called chloroplasty. And it was a really brutal, voluntary procedure done as a last-ditch effort to save people. They would make an incision at the base of the sternum that went around under the rib cage all the way to the middle of the back. They'd pull that tissue back, remove dead tissue around the lungs, and then they'd start cutting ribs out. Up to four on each side. They had to do it in two separate procedures, one on this side, one on that side. The theory behind it was that uh, tuberculosis would cause the lungs to swell and the rib cage would keep the lungs from being able to expand to move air. So if they removed the ribs, the lungs could expand more and move more air and help people survive. Problem is, only about 6% of the people who came in here for that procedure survived. This room is a great room for EVPs and all kinds of activity, really. These doors have a tendency to slam from time to time. If that one slams, see there's a bar that we keep in the door jam there. There's no handle on the back side of this door. So if the door slams and that bar is not there, you're trapped in here forever. Oh. Ever. Uh, but I had a group of police officers in here out of Clarksville, Tennessee, back to our first investigation season this year. And we got four Class A EVPs in this room in five minutes. I mean, just bang, 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 bang. I mean, it was amazing. Wow. What, did they, what did they think? They. Most of them were skeptics. Yeah. Until then. Yeah. yeah. They were blown away. I mean, they were just like that. Wow. This floor has become a lot less ominous, but more active. Interesting. They come out and interact now instead of. It used to be that we'd have shadow figures that would kind of like peek around a doorway and yeah, be jump back. The door. Yeah. Now they kind of come out and they're like. What's up? You know, I mean, you know, they just kind of hang out now. I mean, it's in the 12 years I've been here, this is by far the most active season we've had. And I think it's because we're telling some of the stories that, you know, have been forgotten or not not exactly told to the fullest extent or whatever. Sounds like you're trying to get the truth out. We're trying. We're trying really hard. Really, we haven't gone through this section yet. Yeah, that's kind of scary. Yeah, no, you're not been down in the lobby. Wow. Oh, there's a lobby. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, wow, the front doors comfort. of the building are right through there under that exit sign. Oh. Think about all the emotions that came in and out of those doors. You know, people thinking they were coming here to die, others who thought this was their best hope for survival, uh, people who were released, you know, cured and released and going home, family members who came to pick up, pick up the bodies of their dead loved ones. I mean, just a full spectrum of emotions. You couple that with the bodies that were found right over there, the homeless guy and his dog. That's the bottom of the elevator. Right oh. there where they had to cut them out of the wall. Oh, wow. Whatever it is, the darkest energy in the building seems to have focused itself in here. You know, I mean, this thing will identify itself as a demon. Mm -hmm. We've worked with exorcists and people that do demonology a lot. Did you? It was the chair. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. They don't think that we got a demon here, but we've got a very dark entity that's basically just a giant mm. asshole. Um, but he's very strong and very malevolent. He's got the ability to affect you in a way that you might not have ever experienced before. I've been involved with this stuff for a long, long time. Up until two years ago, wasn't much of a believer in that kind of thing because I'd never experienced it myself. Mm -hmm. um, but I came down here, I was going to demonstrate an SLS camera for some guests. Mm -hmm. And I sat down here, was waiting for them to get here, I was by myself, turned it on, started scanning the room, and I got over by that white column right over there. The camera starts mapping this very tall stick figure. But this thing stepped away from the column, and then it started walking toward me. Then the camera froze. I tried to reset the camera. That's all I remember. I woke up at home the next day. What? Three o'clock oh, in the nice. afternoon. Yeah. And I called Chelsea, because she was one of the other guides that night. I asked her what had happened. 
and she said, are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm okay, but I don't know what happened. I don't know how I got home. I don't remember leaving there. She said, well, you were acting weird last night. We couldn't find you for like three hours. What? When we did find you, you were sitting by yourself in the dark staring at the wall. And I shined a light on you and tried to talk to you. You started cussing me. You didn't even look like yourself. Your face just looked weird. Yeah, I mean, that's just not me. You yeah. Know? But we've had that same kind of thing happen to two or three other people this season. And, you know, other times prior to that. But just this season, we've had it happen to like two or three other people on our team. I really, I, I, I've got no explanation for it whatsoever. Huh. Is that the most powerful thing that's ever happened to you? Yeah, that's yeah. the weirdest thing. Funny thing, that one looks like it's unlocked. This door appears to be unlocked. This has been sealed up. Remember when I talked about the nurse's wing upstairs? Yeah. This is the nurse's wing. It's also still set up for our haunted house. Oh, it makes it even ways. worse. If you guys have a black light. Oh! Has anybody got a black oh, light? Oh, look at down there. That is not something I typically keep on. Dog. Well, I mean, a lot of folks use them. So Whoa. we got 3D glasses. Oh my god, this is awesome. Okay, yeah, look at the balls in, on the ceiling. Wow. This is very cool. Whoa. I wish we could put 3D glasses on you guys at home. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, Brandon, from my phone. Look at this. Now, this, is, this these were actually like patient rooms, though. You can see. Oh, damn. Oh, wow. I feel like this that's one. about the size of what you saw in the SLS camera. That actually was taller. Like, it was like this one? 10 feet tall. Yeah, that's more like that guy. There's a lot of times when those doors will be yeah. all locked and no one back here and you hear full-on conversations going on back here. You'll hear things moving, bangs, whatever. This is such a weird hybrid. A I know. A paranormal investigation in a, in, a, in a haunted house in a haunted house. Yeah. 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 At a real haunted location. Oh, Jesus. Oh, That's wow. <laughs> That definitely comes, yeah, yeah, that's that a pressure comes right forward. that operates her, you know, people step on when they're coming through here and she comes shooting out and it's springs a Where is it? No, it's, it's not, not here. It's right not right here. But, but there is a pressure pad, is what yeah, you're saying. Oh, that's so smart. That's, yeah. uh, that's Valak. Come, come in here and hang out a little bit tonight because you never know. Like I said, this is an area that uh, not a lot of folks come and investigate and as a result, I think the spirits kind of congregate around here. That's about all I got for you. I hope uh, hope you learned a little bit. I hope yeah. that it, uh, hope the, hope she delivers for you. Yeah, not a you little know, bit. I mean, this is uh, it's a little bit like fishing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're biting, sometimes they're not. But I mean, this has been a crazy active season so far, and last night was really awful. I feel like one night's not enough here. No, definitely. Like, there's I agree. no way. I do. It's. Uh, I feel like we should spend a night on each floor. Yeah. Yeah. You could probably get by with that. Uh oh. <laughs> what are you doing? What you got here? What are you doing? Well, how many pieces of table we put down? Twelve. Twelve. And what's our lucky number? Thirteen. Six point six. Not my lucky six, number. Six. Okay. Ah! Wow. That's a nice one. On the nose? I think he just pissed off somebody. Lucky number thirteen. Finished right where we started. Ernie. Well, guys. Thank you, man. You're welcome, man. Yeah, I appreciate thank it. Y'all enjoy so much. tonight. Thank you. Take yeah, care. I appreciate it. Take care. Excellent enjoy your pizza. tour. I appreciate everything. <laughs> yes, thank you for everything. Seriously. You're welcome, man. Seriously. Uh, all right, gentlemen, we ready? Let's yeah. do it. It depends on what ready means. The entire 200,000 square foot, five story, quarter mile body chute tunnel investigation with 13 pieces of tape. Mm. So let's get all the tools mm. and let the night begin. You all know right. how long it's gonna take us to go through this entire building? Seven hours. I was gonna say seven and a half. Yeah. Do you remember every piece of tape? No, but I know there's 13. Yeah. Let's do it. Well, we should go meet up with uh, the person that made it possible to be here tonight. <laughs> That's a good yeah. idea. Let's, yeah. go, let's go find Jesse. Let's okay. go somewhere. Let's, let's go, go find Jesse. Go find Jesse! Jesse! So we want to introduce someone because tonight would not be possible without him. A few months ago, I think five months ago, I put a post out just throwing out a Hail Mary and being like, if anyone happens to have a rental of Waverly Hills that we can come join, please let me know because it's sold out for the entire year. And then and then Jesse, this gentleman right here, please come on in. <laughs> Bring it in, Jesse! <laughs> Literally wrote back on my YouTube and then we've been emailing 
for months and yeah. months and months. Your family had this rented out. Yep. They had a few open spots, and then mm -hmm. kindly you and your family. Wow. Yeah, just invited, and I was like, it's if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. I don't know. <laughs> I remember, I remember one of your emails. I was like, yeah, for sure. And then you were like, really? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, really? Like, yeah, no, dude, I've been trying to go here for like four years. Yeah. Like, really? Yeah. And he doesn't really show up about it in all the videos that we do. Yeah. Every video. Like, wait, 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 You had one request, and you said, if we did hide and clap, yeah. could you do it? And I was like, we don't do that anymore because we got in trouble at one of the locations for being irresponsible during hide and clap. Uh, but they gave us permission here. So this is gonna be yours. Oh, okay. <laughs> he's gonna, be, gonna be yours. <laughs> oh, wow. And to make it even more fun, we're gonna bring you to a part of Waverly Hills that you've never been before. I haven't been to yet. That's and right. no one else is allowed in. All right, so we're gonna do a round of hide and clap. Okay. And Let's seriously, thank you, thank you again, man. No, of course. It's it was crazy enough that I was just like, what are the chances that he's actually gonna be like, <laughs> you can actually do it? And then here we are. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And you crazy. said you've been watching since the Yosemite video. Yeah. The other which is like episode like thirty five. Yeah. Wow. So you've been watching for five years. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Long-term supporter. What you he does. He does you a favor by getting you into Waverly Hills, and then you punish him immediately. By I reward him. him. <laughs> <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's a reward. That's and taking him to the nurses' <laughs> ward. Uh, I remember how bad it was the first time we did it at the Conjuring House. Oh my god. That was awful. I just can't oh wait for him to god. take off the blindfold once he's in there. Oh. Oh wait. And then being wait, like, wait, wait, holy. Sh oh wait, he's not gonna get this. No, we're gonna blindfold him all the way in there. And then he'll play the game blindfolded. Oh. Or should we bring him in there? Should we should let him see it? Uh, no, 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 no. We should walk him back there blindfolded. He's gonna get hurt. It's really dangerous. Back there is there. rust everywhere. It's really dangerous back there. So what if we just blindfold him when we're like, you ready? Baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, let's do that. Uh, All right, let's sounds sounds better to me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's walk him you back. You sure it's a blindfold or a mini bra? Cool. Let's put him in the good. corner over here then. Cool. Come, oh, come up this way. Come this way. Okay, come this way. Just come that way. No, other way. Other way. Other way. That way. Yep. Yep. That way. Left. 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 Straight. Right. Right. Straight. Right. Straight. Right. 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 Stay right there. Just stay right there. Perfect. That's pretty good. That's not bad at all. Okay. Uh, thirty seconds on the clock. Uh, you know the rules, right? You get to ask for three claps. And yes. you don't find everyone in five minutes. Right? We give you up. Yeah, you get three. Uh, normally there's a punishment, but in this case, it's just your pride. So. I you didn't find it, Junior. Why are you guys doing this? <laughs> you get. You asked! <laughs> you ready? So you get three total claps and you get five minutes on the clock. You want to set a timer? Yep. Okay. Alright, 30 seconds to hide. Alright, 30 seconds. Okay, cheater. We already got a cheater. What? He's a pumpkin eater. Five, four, three, two, one.
Which I, I feel like we need another round. <laughs> like, we need another one. He did way was, too good. That was way too quick. And also, that was way too. What, what the? F- that was hilarious. I took a lot of observations. Wow. Dude, he came in here. He's like, okay, this is here. <laughs> <laughs> I literally right, walked by. I was like, okay, there's a snake on this desk, and I. When we first walked through, I remember it. No, I don't uh, think I've ever won. I've I've never won. I think we need to do another round. So yeah. that bull. One more round. Wait, <laughs> one more round. But who was the first person to get caught? Corbin. I was. Corbin. Yeah. Ah. Should we give him a chance to hide? Yeah, give him yeah. a chance. Yeah. Yeah. To hide. Yeah. Or would you rather seek again? Because your eyes take a lot of bumps. You'd rather hide? Yeah. Right. Dude, he's gonna find a ladder to the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that was, I feel like you were like, you knew I was there, you're like, so where's the final clap, huh? Well, I remember, I literally checked, because I thought we could put the GoPro on the top of the thing. Yeah. And then I put my hand, I was like, wait, there's no glass here. Somebody's going to be in here. Throw your blindfold on, kid. Alright. Oh, yeah. Come, on, come hang out, come hang out with your friend over here, huh? Come I'm going to go over here? Patty. Come hang out with your friend over here. Alright, 30 seconds, you go. Uh, I gotcha. Okay. da da 15. I can hear you. 10. 9. 8. What the? 7. What's going on over there? 6. 5. 4, 3, 2, 1. That wasn't there before. I'm surprised yeah, you got it. You can't move the curtain to come back. Oh, you put it right in your face. You know exactly what you did. Thank you again. Of course.
course. <sighs> Remember playing hide and clap with you again? I understand why you wanted to do it now. Yeah. Wait, you just knew you'd dominate. Yeah. You practiced. I, I thought you practiced with your family. He probably like analyzed all of our other hide and claps. He's like, Elton goes for the weird one. Brandon <laughs> goes the hard one. Corey doesn't try. Corey just stands, in, <laughs> Corey just stands next to a door. And Corey was always super close to the person who's yeah. I don't know how that keeps happening. Yeah, I don't know. Well, now you have to go play hide and clap with your family. Yeah. Somewhere in this building. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> go find him at least. Good luck. <laughs> oh, you have to go find him. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. oh, that's that's tough. Tough. Should be tough. <laughs> there you go. Well, thank you again, man. Of course. And then, yeah, thanks to your, your family, we've already yeah. said hi to them and all that. Yeah. That's yeah. real yeah. awesome to be here. Great meeting, man. man. We'll yeah. find, we'll find, I'm sure we're going to run into it at some point tonight. Yeah. So, of course. You guys are doing your thing. We'll go be at it and do our thing. Yeah. Well, thanks, y'all. <laughs> hey, we're going to try and talk to Satan. Elton, you know who that was, right? Yeah. That's the Hide and Clap world champion. He's been on ESPN for seven years in a row. Well, that, makes, that doesn't make me feel bad anymore. Well, that doesn't make well, why would you, you invited a professional? I didn't know. How, how did you not he know? Us, dude. He, that's why you bet two grand on the game. You, you just took our reputation. You just put it down in the dirt. How am I going to pay rent? We all threw in a K. We thought it'd be an easy flip. And now he's walking away. He's walking away with what? Four grand? Five grand? At Easily, least. That yeah. to 30. And we're walking away with what, Elton? An overnight stay at Waverly Hills that we couldn't have gotten without him. Welcome back to part two. <laughs> We got an entire three hour tour of this entire facility Jesus. from Ernie, who has worked here for over a decade. And along with the history, we have learned all the paranormal stories. Mm -hmm. And the most remarkable story, I think we can all agree, we have ever heard he told happened oh, to him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. Right in that corner. The most remarkable story ever. So if you missed that story, here's what he said. But I came down here, I was going to demonstrate an SLS camera for some guests. The camera starts mapping this very tall stick figure, and then it started walking toward me. Then the camera froze. That's all I remember. I woke up at home the next day. What? Three o'clock well, in the afternoon. Yeah. I think we can all agree that what he's implying is that he was possessed. That's exactly yeah. right. He was, right? 100%. Yeah, well, there's like a casual 12 hour possession. There's no other way that you can not know where you are the rest of the night and also be talking to people and go home. Yeah. How exactly. is that possible? I mean, I've done that. Many, many times I know, in my life. just Brandon. Though. But he said he was no alcohol. He was down here with an oh. SLS camera, which I have. Mm. And he was sitting right here, and he was walking around. And he actually even believes that it happened at him like three in the morning, or he was found at like three in the morning. Mm -hmm. One of those two. I don't remember which. He no, said. I, th I, think I think he said he two. didn't wake up till two thirty p.m. at his house. Is when he like came to. Yeah. And the next day, like that's no. It was like 12, 13 hours that he was blacked yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, doesn't remember anything. Oh, but what he said, which was really interesting, is he said that they came up on him. He said they like he's been there for thirty minutes, just staring at the corner. Yeah. Oh yeah. Exactly. Just staring. Yeah. Well, I think we should start here. Yes. Because definitely. I have a curious theory, which he wasn't too opposed to, hmm. was, which is the fact that there was a murder here mm -hmm. by mm. teenagers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, William. An inexplicable murder. Yeah. Why would you ever? murder of essentially a homeless man who's staying here and the dog and bludgeon him mm -hmm. and throw his body down the elevator that's right here. Literally right there, yeah. And he's never crossed those wires before as a theory. And he said that over his years of investigating, he's learned a lot more about Sarah and about the property. Mm -hmm. So maybe let's see if he's right. And then we can expand and cover the body shoe, the fifth floor in 502, the children's ward, yeah. the fourth floor considered the most haunted hallway mm -hmm. in the world, mm -hmm. the operation room, door where the kids use the hatchet to try and break out and someone owes us a nap in the morgue so we'll be here for oh. the next week filming and beyond Sounds that like. there are 13 pieces of tape oh. that we have all forgotten about I completely uh. forgot. that we can't leave until we've collected every single one and what's crazy is there's not even one in this room oh is there not you didn't put one in this room Perfect. Perfect. well that throws it that throws out all my memory of everything it's considered to be the most haunted location in America. It was built out of desperation in an effort to help the tuberculosis pandemic that affected over 10 million people. Once you entered the property line, it was rather likely you would never leave. For 40 years, Waverly Hills saw nothing but pain, suffering, and death. Not a day went by without a life being taken. Documents that held the true number of patients lost at Waverly are gone. Staff would secretly remove the dead through this tunnel hour after hour. 
forms of mistreatment and horror stories that took place throughout the entire facility for over a century, including those that happened on the fifth floor, will be told to us tonight by our guide, where demonic figures have instantly possessed visitors. All right, so we have a pretty extreme amount of ground to cover. Oh my gosh. So let's start together. Definitely. And I think ultimately we're going to have to break into groups. There's just no way. Yeah. This place is too big. For sure. No way we can cover enough. So no, not in one night. Right off the bat, we have just some new tools that were uh, given to us by Ernie for the night. This one's pretty interesting. It's essentially Ooh. oh, senses vibration and I guess if I do that, Energy, we'll set it off. It's the only other way to set this thing off. Okay, yeah, yeah. Is with vibration too. And vibration. So it's like a K2, oh, like, it's like a K2 REM pod hybrid. Yeah, but it's like really difficult to set off. So that's gifted to us. And then also we have like the EVP. Spike strip. Yeah, the REM pod spike strip. That's yeah. what it is. So we have two new tools that we're gonna be using tonight, as well as the entire toolkit that we have. And we're gonna do the absolute best we can to cover as much ground as we can here. This can cover an entire floor. And I will say that I really want to use the noise canceling headphones in the spirit box down here. Yes, definitely. Because the last time, and the only, the few times that that has actually worked mm -hmm. has been Execution Rocks yep. or something evil, Axe Murder House, something evil, yeah. Lizzie Borden, Lizzie Borden potentially was something very evil. Definitely. And then of course, here. That's really the times that it has worked the best. Mm -hmm. Let's see if the SLS picks up anything. The SLS is the one I'm most curious about because this is the last thing that he had in his hands before he said he lost consciousness. Was this the area he saw the He said it was in that, he said yeah. it's in that corner over there. All right, so it's mapping you guys. Okay, dope. Pretty well right now. We definitely lay that out over there then. Yeah. So. Hello, my name is Elton. We have a friend of here, Ernie. We understand that someone or something down here has the ability to take people over, potentially possess them. Especially someone like Ernie, who's an experienced veteran of Waverly Hills, and he has no recollection of what happened to him that night. All right, if there's anyone back here, perhaps you're in a different part of the building, but I invite you to come join us in the lobby. William, if you're down here, and if you do want to talk with us tonight, we just put this little device in front of the elevator. There's also another one across the room by the doors over there in the corner. Is there anybody here? You guys want to go fish watch over? Sure. Should we just switch to night vision? Maybe just like 10 seconds of pitch black. Yeah, go 10 seconds of black, yeah. All right, we're making it completely dark in here for you. But you have my permission to demonstrate your power. If you have any. I don't think it has any. I think it's afraid. What if Ernie is similar to Corey where, you know, they're very susceptible and very open so uh, that's why it chose him, because it was an easy target. Ernie does seem susceptible. I mean, he's very open-minded. Did you attach yourself to Ernie? It's weird. The SLS like, won't fail there. It of course. It's definitely picking everything up, so. It's picking up every single person in the room, so this thing is definitely working right now. If you want us to go to a different area of the building, you gotta tell us. It's a little too quiet right now. Okay, that's cool. It's cool right now. Hmm. Did you look down the hall? Yeah. Yeah. No, nothing. Nothing down the hall, nothing down the clowns. Dude, down. we could just come back here after three. Yeah. I mean, that is like when he got possessed was three. Is that? I don't, I don't know. They like, found him at three, they said. Right. What if I just sat facing the wall with the headphones on? Oh, that's actually that's a great idea. idea. Recreate. I think it was a pillar. We should have asked where he was when he was staring at the wall. He was right here. He said, he said this is what he saw in SLS. He said he saw the pillar, and he thought that that was trying to yeah. recognize it. And 
then from there it froze, and then when it froze, he said that's when something came toward him, and then he just stopped. Yeah, yeah but I don't know where they. I they don't know found him facing a wall. There's yeah. only a handful of walls. To to be honest, there's only a handful of walls here. Yeah. So this is like fake. I mean, it would probably have to be. Yeah, I just assume facing that. Here, I'll put the headphones on. Yeah. Someone else can have this in their hand. Okay. And then, because like you guys can walk around the room and ask questions if you want. Yeah, definitely. Let me see the SLS. While well, you look at locks, it's just that one. And it'll slide. Alright, you guys ready? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna turn this up. And three, two, one, it's up. We would like to talk to you, whoever you may be. What is your name? Oh, 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 oh. I got something over here. You got something? Yeah. See it? Yo, look how tall it is. It's to the right, it's to the right. Wait, did you see? Dog, did you see how tall that uh, yeah, was? That was dude. super tall. Dude, it was from the bottom of the screen to almost the very top. Is that you? Are you here with us? Did we just see you? Look at how tall that is. If this thing freezes, dude, I'm leaving. Wait, look, look at the purple. It's as tall as the curtain. It's, it, no, it's over here. It's over to the right. Remember, it's it's opposite. It's over this way. It's next you. to next to the wood. We would like to know more about you, if that's possible. Hey. I didn't catch that. Did you just say your name? Be patient with her. Be patient with her. Can you tell us who we just saw on our camera? Can you tell us their name? Whatever. Whatever. Let's go. I heard that. Do you know who or what possessed Ernie? Where am I? Are we talking to William? Is this you, William? Do you want justice for what happened to you? Leave the room. Leave. What if we don't leave? Yeah, we should go this way. Why? I, as soon as I walked in here, Elton said, leave the room. And I go, are you talking about this room? And he goes, leave. What if we don't want to leave? What if we walk further down this hall and try to find you? Is that okay? Is he very Rachel? 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 Is your name Rachel? We know you have power. We've heard it from Ernie. And we know you can do it without... You can show us you're here without using Elton. You can use any of these devices. You can bang on a wall. We just want to know that there is something here. I'm not really getting anything that seems like outstandingly clear through this. Yeah. I feel like I'm hearing things that's ripping through radio stations, but nothing where I'm like, it sounds abnormal. Specifically, I'll hear stuff that sounds like abnormal. Yeah. But on this, I just felt like I was just hearing like random little radio clips coming through. Maybe uh, we need to head to that uh, body shoot room pretty soon. Do the mod chant. True. As soon as I stepped in there, you were like, leave the room. Leave the room. And I was like, are you talking to me? Are you talking about... Did y'all hear that thud? Okay, we're still on. You heard that? He's on? There was just a loud thud. I heard that. I mean, to be fair, Ernie's been here for over a decade. And yeah. something happened to him. We've been here for five hours. Exactly. Six hours. No, you're right. Fishing, as he says. Yeah, fishing. Yeah. Fishing. Okay, the first investigation of our trip, I always charge everything. Everything was charging while we were waiting. This thing is now giving me a low battery warning. Really? Already? And it's, and it's plugged into a power brick. Literally how it operates. So wait, first your phone, what? then Corbin's phone. What the now hell that. is going on? This thing is zapping everything like crazy. 
Look, Lily. Ten percent. Ten minutes remaining. We was at hundred percent when we started here. And there you go. It's through here, right? No. Oh, we we go through the doors. We do? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Through here and then just go off further. Yeah, it's like. Uh, yeah. It's like barely even, yeah. It's big enough to do. Alright, well, I'm just going to use this thing till it dies. Yeah. I can't believe they built this place in two years. Yeah, that's insane. Well, it's already like. I mean, where's the, where's the first place? It was oh, like, yeah, here. There's that dump. Close the rag. Yes, do not touch that rag. Here are the cones. Alright, let me see if the camera can pick up anything. That's why it's in my front pocket because I was like, maybe, oh, this one's done. Maybe the ghost was like, here, let me take the battery out of the <laughs> yeah. SLS and put it in the cat ball. Is it possible for somebody to suppress that? I mean, yeah, it's working totally fine now. <laughs> All right, <laughs> well, yeah. I'll keep this one for later then. I think we should send one down. Uh, roll it down. You want to roll it down? And then let's, we'll do Let's uh, do this. Send it down. Then we'll follow in the wise words of Patty to the Ma chant. Yes. Yeah. Give it a couple minutes, see if anything happens with it. Okay. You know what, and for safe measure, I'll throw mine too. Yeah. You can do both. All right, okay. ready? That one's called A, that one's called B. Which one gets ready? First. And go. Yo. Yo. Oh! Oh! oh. Wait. Whoa! Look how far that is! Still going. Wait, you can't even see him. If you are down there, you can move those balls to show us that you're here. All right, y'all. So we just rolled the cab balls to the very bottom. We just walked about maybe halfway. Hey, look how far down we are from where they're at. It's crazy. And it's maybe halfway. Uh, we're gonna do the. Ma chant and try to awaken the spirits. And then uh, after we do that, we're gonna sit quiet for a couple minutes and try to see if we can hear anything. You guys ready? Yeah. I'm gonna take a seat. That uh, was pretty wet. Yeah. I sit down. Wait. There's no wind down here, right? Did you just hear that? What just happened? You just heard that all of a sudden? No, I see something else. No, I just heard it like a. What did you see, Elton? Why is that screen moving? There's a screen moving? Dude, I ain't heard of it. I'm gonna take a seat. That uh, was pretty wet. Yeah. I wouldn't sit down. Wait. Ready, guys? Do it. Alright. One, two, three.
Hello? Okay. Give us a warning. If there are any souls or spirits that were unfortunately trapped here, we'd love to be able to hear your story and acknowledge your presence. Nearly everyone that came through here was done in secrecy, many of which your files are lost, and no one ever knows what happened to you. So we've come here understanding that. We'd love to know if there is anyone still trapped within these walls. Tape that we don't get to take down yet. Oh my god. Where the kids got trapped in a door that doesn't close and try to use a hatch to open it. Well, let's see if it closes on us. Again, there is no lock holding the door closed. Push it open. Yep, push it. Yep. Well, that's easy. It opens like a I'm down to go to that big room where the piano was. We kept hearing the noises when we first walked in. Remember? Are you going to go all the way down there? Oh, that, that was, was like that's three floors We just floors passed down. that. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. not on this floor? No, not even Someone could go upstairs one more to Sarah. To 502. That's, what, that's the one Sarah is on? So Five. two people go to 502 and two people go to the surgical room. Oh, so fine. I feel like though these devices and the cat balls would fare very well at 502 because the children's ward's up there. Mm -hmm. And then the surgical room, we can take everything else, the REM pod and all that. Yeah, I'm down so, with that. All right, All so right. it's you and Corey and Brandon and I are splitting? Sure. That means that we're going to Sarah's room, and pretty dark story happened there. It's actually pretty horrifying. Yeah, um, we told everybody that she hung herself. Oh, yeah, but I don't think that's actually the truth. If you guys haven't seen it, part one, he really, really explains it, but... Yeah, he has a whole tattoo on his forearm this big dedicated to this room. It's pretty gruesome. It's pretty gruesome. So my phone has died. Yep. My SLS has died. Yep. My cat ball refused to work and then all of a sudden worked when we changed places. Yep. And as far as I know, we're in the most haunted place in America. We don't really have any other activity besides that. Besides so it's literally draining all of our equipment. That's the exit sign, yeah. right? Yeah. Red room. Oh man, dude, this takes me back to Insidious. Oh. <laughs> Supposedly, they say right here is where they found her hung. She. This is where they found her with the rope around her. Did you hear that? What? I just heard tapping. It sounded like it was coming from like. Damn, I heard it from behind Evan, but it was like. T -t -t -t. All right, let's get this an old-fashioned trigger object. Let's Where'd you this. put the uh, rope on it? That's right, magic. It's not on yet. Okay. You can turn it on if you want. Yeah, I mean, I'm with you now. 
All right, so we have a motion sensor light in the hallway, which has only gone off actually once in the history of uh, 40 locations. Yeah, pretty much. This thing, which hasn't gone off for us yet. And then the broken cap. No, another one. It's different. Oh, it's one. dead? Yeah. Look, button on. What? Done. Another one. I believe these ones are the same as the K2 where they go off with energy or a REM pod where they kind of can show directional of like you lay them all out and you can see which way it's coming in or which way it's going. I'm gonna put this, this is her room, right? That was the bathroom, the bathroom. I believe. That's the bathroom? Yeah. Did they find her, was she hanging in the bathroom? No, right here. She's hanging right here, so maybe I should just put the, this right here. Go a little farther? A little bit farther? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. That's good there. We have a lot of stuff for you to touch. We would definitely like for you to light any one of these off. How do these light up? Do they just... I think, think it's like a... Okay, yeah, yeah, by touch. So all you have to do is touch any one of these. Oh, this is kind of creepy. This is really cool. We see something light up coming in this way. Hello, spirits that might still be here, entities, beings. We understand the atrocities that have happened here. And that for most of you, this was your final place of living. And for some of you, it's possible you might be trapped here, for others you might have chosen to stay here because of what was done to you. Sarah, my name is Corbin. I would love to talk to you and I come in peace. I do not want to harm you at all. Hi Sarah, my name is Brandon and from what I understand, your story has just been like covered up. People lied about it and they didn't want the truth to get out about what happened to you. So we're here to get the story from the source. We want to know what happened to you. If you're here, you can make anything here light up. We have a whole line all the way down to where we are. You can touch any one of them to let us know you're here. We also don't have to get too serious. I mean, if we just want to talk to you at first. So if you can bang on something or maybe touch one of these, then that's how we'll know that you are here. Could you touch that box? None of the tools here are meant to bring you any harm. They're just meant to let us know if you are here. Is it Sarah that we're talking to? Are you outside of the room? We just heard a couple knocks. I'm okay with you watching us. We'd like to talk to you and actually have you come into the room. Remember, we're not trying to hurt you. We just want to talk. both sides of us, but not in the room here. When we've gone to places that are known to be the most haunted, we tend to have the least amount of activity. And then when we go to the places where they're small, they're homey, 
We don't feel that intimidating, insane activity. I mean, think about like all the small places we go are the places where we kind of goof around and act like a family mm -hmm. the most. Like Lizzie Borden, yeah. the Lair House, yeah. like all of the smaller, Burnbrae, Shanley, like all the smaller places are where we kind of, a little bit more lively and fun. And then we come to these places and we're like, it's Waverly Hills, yeah, like we super. expect to get those photographs yeah. that Ernie was showing us. We expect to see all these things, but he's accumulated that over 15 years. Exactly. Very interesting. Trying to use any of the words on the radio to be able to formulate a sentence or just to speak to us. Are you here, Sarah? Sarah, are you okay with talking to us? If there's any spirits or anyone that wants to talk to us tonight, all you gotta do is touch that box. Answer yes or no. I think I just saw movement on the camera too. Did you see that? I heard it. I didn't no, I saw something crawling on the floor. I only heard it. I, I'm getting blinded by my screen. I, I actually can't see in front of. As you pointed, I saw something. Yeah, let's walk up there. Marks are? Is that possibly what we heard? No. Where's the door of the hatchet? It's a little it's farther. Actually, it's two years further. Yeah. yeah. We didn't hear it. What are you hearing? Give me like a moaning. Brandon, what did you hear? I, I couldn't make it out. This was so loud next to me, but I heard something not coming from this, but in this room. So in, in my left ear, it sounded like like a sweeping noise, like somebody like had like an old yeah, like broom. A yeah. Could it be maintenance? Could it be maintenance? You remember we have a we have a, um, a yeah, steering wheel yeah, that's a maintenance yeah, yeah. man. The old guy who was leaning against the wall. Yeah. We had the big uh, set of keys. Is the maintenance man here? Are you watching to protect? Oh, we've got an orb. Where? Right there. Look. Oh yeah, brighten your screen if you can. Oh wow. All the way down to the back and that's where we heard the noise. We are gonna move to this room because we felt like some of you were watching us. 
We don't know who you are, but we would definitely like to talk to you. I'm going to put this REM pod right in the middle. And if you'd like to talk to us, tap on the wall. Tap that REM pod. Show us that you're here. We have a whole line through the hallway as well. If you moved out of your way, if you want to make yourself known over there, we'll let you have your space. Look at the temperature. The, in Fahrenheit? Wow. What the hell? Before it was it just said like 78.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and now it's 82,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It's like going haywire. It's completely losing it. Look, look at it. See, back to 86, 25,000. What? The temperature. And it's completely not, look, am I, am I turning red? No. It it's it's almost done. like it broke. Wait, what? Sarah, are you there? Is it possible to talk to us? Who was he? Who was the man that did this to you? You're the one that's destroying all of our devices. That's fine. Could you give us another sign that you're here? And look, okay. See? Normal temperature, 78.6. Totally working. Wait, do you want to aim it at that spot one more time? Let's see if it does it again. Yeah. We loved trying to talk to you, but I know that it might be a little bit hard to talk about these serious situations. Yeah, I mean, it should, I mean, I know you have people every single day of the year coming out here trying to communicate, so. That'd be so hard. All right, so we're gonna get out of your space. And we're gonna meet them at the hatchet door, right? Yeah, we're hatchet got traps and we're smashing the door with a hatchet. I'm excited for that. Let's go. All right. It's doing it. What the f Right, we're back in the hallway. Yo. And. Dude, we, we low key might wanna bring the tools to right here. Dog. It was working. Perfectly fine, wait, wait. 10 feet over there. Oh, here it goes. It's back. Wait, but look, I'm pointing it down. Uh-huh. Okay, it's fine. Huh. It's almost as if every time it like hits it, it just goes up to 100,000 degrees. That's what I'm saying. Turn your light off, Joey. You were, I literally heard you right before I was about to toss that. Yeah, now you were further up in the hallway. I was wondering, how the hell did he see us? Well, you didn't see us, though. I heard someone. Well, you know, it's 305 right now. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, boy. We're about to come up on the yeah. uh, spare box all up there. Yeah, we did. You did too? Yeah, dude. Yeah, right. we, we tried everything, man. It was very, very quiet. We got one, yeah. 
This is bizarre. I know. It is. Like, very. It's like the least activity we've ever gotten anywhere. You're saying that the only activity we've gotten is malfunction. The SLS yeah. dying, my phone dying, the thermal going up to 100,000 yeah. degrees Fahrenheit. You know what's weird is that it almost feels like it's not trying to talk to us. It's trying to suppress anything that we're trying to do to talk to them. I agree. And also, Ernie was saying that last night they had amazing results. Mm -hmm. So it's like, are they just tired? Or like, could it be something about us? I mean, I, I sat upstairs and was like, they got people in here every single day trying to communicate with. I think <laughs> about to go crazy because it's 3 a.m. now. I, I think that they've been with us, draining the hell out of everything we have. Probably just hoping that we'll leave, but I think when they realize we're not gonna leave, <laughs> then it might get wild. Cause I don't know, I don't know about y'all, but like, everything is being drained. Oh, big ass Ooh, bag. Ooh, that one was a But like, way. I'm not tired, but my body feels dead. Yeah. But I'm awake and I'm here. Mentally, totally awake, physically, kind of dead. Kind of tired. Yeah. Also, a lot of walking, but still not. I mean, we've not done that more. Much. Yeah. You want to do two at the sisters and two at the coffins? Sure. I'm down to go to the coffins. Yeah. All right. Should we switch? Sure. Yeah, we just put the groups up a little bit if you guys want. Sure. So, my idea is I think we need to take this back to our roots. Definitely. I think we've gotten a bit excited about all the devices yep. and we've kind of become reliant upon them. But when Corey and I first started doing these videos, we didn't have a single device. Yeah. We didn't know what a K2 was. Yeah. What do you guys do? We just... Ouija board and that was it. We yeah, Ouija board and we walked around and we let the location do what talk. it wanted to do and talk to us. So I think Corey and I are going to go get all 13 pieces of tape. Just he and I. I don't think this is going to be good because we have no tools. Nothing. Back to our roots. You guys have nothing. We have everything. Wait, no way. Okay. That's right. That's right. So that was one. One. That was one of the two. That's just the That's one. So you guys keep investigating until one of two things happens. The sun rises and we have to leave, or we get back in time. Where should we go to first? I mean, I think Let's get the cat balls. <laughs> you don't want to do just take this one no. first? So it's like we no, we can't. They're here. Let's go get the cat balls. All right, buddy. All right, first piece of tape. This is already way worse. Yeah, it's just you and me. <laughs> no devices. Should I make it even worse? No. Is that <laughs> perfect? Okay, this is actually what we're seeing. <laughs> for just for everyone watching. All the way back. Perfect. You're in front of me. We have this room perfectly set up for any ghost. Why don't you take it out of that doorway? I don't know, I just feel like if it's in here, we can see it all pretty good. 
Do we have another motion sensor light? We have cat balls. Maybe a cat ball in the other doorway? Yes, definitely. Is there any cat yeah, Well, we have one in the doorway already. Oh, we have another motion sensor light. We have a way. What, 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 what? It sounds beautiful down here, dude. It does. It does sound beautiful. Should we do it? Sure, let's do it until we get to the bottom. Come on, come on, it says smile. Come on. We have every device we've ever known here to try to talk to you. Oh my God, I can only see when you take pictures. Whoa, there's something like glowing at the very bottom that flashes. Can you see it on the floor? There's something on the floor. It could have been, oh, it's a, uh, yeah, I know that it's. You came down this far? Yeah, I went all the way past this. That's what I almost tripped on. Spiders, ah, spiders. The spiders? Ah, spiders. Now, one thing I want to let you guys know is that we haven't gotten a lot of activity here. That's okay, everything. But we really, really would like to talk to you. If there's anybody here, anybody, would you mind just saying something? Maybe touching one of our devices? We have our REM pod here at the window. You can just touch that and it will go off. You just have to get really, really close to it. We have another one next to the window or next to this door right here. We have a motion sensor. I have a K2 in my hand if you want to come up close and talk to us. We just have devices everywhere. Just try to move something. Anything. And that will be perfect. Take one again. Do it again. Okay, now. Now it works. I took a picture of you. I know, I watched you. If there's somebody in the hallway, feel free to come inside this room. Is that the back wall? Yeah. What the f is that? What is what? What? I heard what you heard before. The noise?
Don't tell me it's done. It's done. Fuck. Alright, Waddle Soup Legend, ready for you to light up one of these string lights, but next light I see, I'll take that as uh, you being ready. And I'll snap a photo. We're leaving. And I'm not sure if you may ever come back. But anything you'd like to say, move, touch, we'll hear it. If you want us to bring your ball back, if you can give me a sign, I'll make sure I throw it back when we get to the top. Got it right here. It might be tough to answer the questions. Um, so I can give you this, this might be helpful to communicate. You can beat that red pot once, or make it light up once for yes. Beat twice, light up twice for two. And make it light up three times if you don't know. All right, I'm gonna throw your ball back. We'll wait for it to stop moving, and if you wanna dribble it around, we should be able to hear it. You in the hallway? Are you watching us from outside this room? I think the only other tape on floor one is in the uh, maze. <laughs> oh, in the maze? Yeah. Alright, well thank you for talking to us. I know it was, it was very brief, but uh, we really enjoyed talking to you, so maybe you can make that go off one more time to say goodbye. Goodbye to you. Well, let's head over to, uh, to the sister's room. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, the bat. Dude, that bat is literally like chasing us. Yes, they're here. Oh my god. Look, look at this. Look at that. Okay, if I. Man, this back. Oh, dude, why do I hate being back here so much more? Alright, so we moved over to the sister's room on floor two. Got a cat ball and a K2 set up on, well two K2s now, set up on the bed. We got one of the string lights down the hallway, motion light the door. Corbin's got this set of motion, or set of- uh, I have a circle. String lights making a little circle out of them. I'm gonna take the REM pod and go throw it way down this way, because we'll be able to hear this thing from anywhere. So, I remember he was saying that the uh, nurse's quarters, right down there, you get a lot of activity. So, I'm gonna go set it down that way, and we should be able to hear it from right here. Number two. Oh my god. What? Might be taped to the page. Oh, it opened it up. Oh no. I mean, fortunately, it's a prop book. Where is it? It's okay. It's a prop book. It's okay. Okay, got it. I'll take it. Fuck. Piece number two. I'm sorry. We have this whole room set up and decked out. We have lights everywhere that can touch any one of these. We have a motion set. Oh. The nurse's quarters. Hello? What? Wow. 
What do we do? Like, we, 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 I don't, I don't know. I have my full setup over here. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Would you like us to come over there? What is that? Were you, were you the nurse that watched over these two sisters? You're welcome to come down here and join us. Can you come over here? Is that possible? Dude, it's going nuts. Is it right? Yeah, there, there, there. You see it? It's on the chalkboard. Go in there. Go in there on the left. Right there. Yep. Yeah. Ah, uh, three. All right. Three. Ten more. That's not bad. Look at all their oh. lights. The oh, the REM pod's right here. And this is where it was going on. Wait, they're all the way down there. Yeah. Telling him to go down. I'm staying here with the sisters. No, you gotta get closer, Brandon. I don't want to. Should we go over there? No. No, we're good here. Brandon, you gotta get closer. You mind if I take a photo of you? He says that three photos in. And then uh, there it is. Why do I feel like each piece of tape we get is like we're solving a clue? <laughs> it's like, oh, the tape is in here. Oh, the tape is in there. <laughs> did you ever, uh, did you ever listen to Nelly growing up? A little bit. A little bit of Nelly? A little bit of Nelly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Is it okay if we talk to Lois and Audrey? Is that okay with you? Okay. Right here, look, there it is. You see the tape? Go ahead, grab it. No, it's on the inside. Reach inside, it's on the back side of the door. No, all the way in. To the right, yeah, to the left. No, 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 to the left, like, on, yeah, on that, but on, like, all the way in. Like, you're gonna have to use your other hand. Like, there's no way your hand bends that way. I'm gonna let you do it, bro. No, no, good. I don't trust my hand. Come on, go ahead, do it. Go ahead, reach your hand in there. No, to the left, and then lower. Yep, it's on there. Yep. I did it. <laughs> I have my K2 sensor, and we also have every device that we could have to talk to you. Are you here tonight? You can move any one of the lights, anything on the floor. We also have a motion sensor in the, uh, in the door frame. Would you let me know if you would like to talk? Also, you could tap anything twice if you would not like to talk. You. No, no, that was you. F you. F you, that was 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 you. Okay, okay, can I say something? Y yeah, please. I heard the. Da -da -da -da. My foot kicks it. Then it went that way. I heard it go. Da -da 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 -da. And then, as I'm not even looking down, I just hear the roll, but I'm not thinking anything. And then my foot kicks it. So maybe the ball was further back. It wasn't there. Shut the f up! Don't say that. The ball wasn't moving. I feel we both filmed it and like looked right at it. The ball was right here. It was right here and it wasn't moving. Shut up, dog. I was standing right. You're f with me, dog. I was, bro, bro. I am not, bro. I'm either okay. Either the ball stopped right here, and, and then you kicked it. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna come back down that way. And I'll walk you back over. So, let's go. If you do not like Brandon, you do not want him to touch you, 
please make that go off before he gets there. Make it go off before I get over there. Does this sit right here? Yeah. That's it, tape. Yeah. That's six? Is that six or seven? Six. six or, no, seven. That bed doesn't seem very comfy. Audrey, were you comfortable sleeping here? You hear mm hmm? Also, Audrey, I have this K2 sensor right here. You can tell us multiple ways if you're here. Did you like anything about this place? Did you hate being here? Or did you did you dislike this place? Yeah, there's one right there in the light. Okay. Straight above you. Okay. That's eight. Eight? That's eight. Okay, Let's go up. And then there should be nine and ten above us. Do you want us to leave? Leave so you can get your rest. Sure. It sounds like you don't care if we're here. Dude, I'm telling you, I rapid fired, put a bunch down because I really wanted to get to 13. Oh my god, look at that door. Oh, it's boarded up. Wait, what? Wait. It's boarded from. The inside? Our side? Oh, what the f is that? What? We haven't been here. Can we go this way? Yes, we can. Let's put the wood back then. Oh, oh we're here. Balls lining up. Yeah, that's the glow in the dark one. But look, this is 502. Yeah. So there's tape right here. Yeah. There it is. That's nine. I wish you could have the more. Yeah. I mean, if you just, just let us know one, one final time and we'll leave. If you want us to go, we'll go. I think I heard don't go, but I can't count on this. Could you move something, any light, make the red pod go off, touch anything if you don't want us to go? Literally anything. The whole camera just no. Wait, did you just hear that? Wait, what? 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 No. What, 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 did just delete all the footage? We just lost like everything in the last half hour. No, we didn't. Dude, the whole camera <laughs> and a red screen flash, and then right now it said some clips require data recovery. It's like killing all of our fucking footage. What? I'm gonna record. What the? Wait, it just turned off again. Oh my God. Yo. Dude, there's only one clip on the camera. No. I don't think Lois and Audrey really want to talk right now. That's all good. Yeah, it's fine. That's yeah, fine. I understand they probably want their rest. Yeah. By the way, brand new camera. This is 100% brand new out of the box. But it's the same other camera, which just matches the other one that we've been using forever. So they should be here. Well, let's go out to the balcony and then we'll see them. If 
If anybody's in here, give me a nice. My name is Corbin, and we are going to try to start an investigation and try to talk to you. I have a K2 sensor right here in my hand, so if you're right next to me, I'll be able to sense it. And Brandon is already in the board. What do you call it? A tray? He's already in the tray. So he really, really wants to talk to you. You're in there. Is that flashing? I just saw that. That's flashing. Is it? These are flashing, right? Yeah. Are you flashing these lights? You might be the first uh, person we've seen flash these lights. Wow, this is very cool. So, it's obvious you're here. Would you mind touching Brandon inside of the tray? I, I've been filming YouTube videos since 2016. Over 500 videos, this has never happened. No, Ever. Why would a camera just randomly be like, all right, let's clear the card? It, it didn't even like, it corrupted. Every single file has just like a question mark or nothing. And three beeps for an I don't know. Do you understand? Is there anybody talking to us? Do you enjoy using the lights? And not touching the uh, red pot on the, uh, on the uh, table. Elton just said meat at gargoyle. Not good news. Meat at gargoyle? Yeah. We had to stop that investigation rather abruptly because uh, we're going to go meet Elton at the gargoyle. Hello. You filming? Yep. yep. Lost every single clip on what? the camera. What? What? Every single clip has a question mark on it. Everything. Where were you? Fifth floor. Lily, one of the fifth floor, walked around for 30 seconds, grabbed the tape, walked outside to the balcony. Whole camera just goes <laughs> flashes orange, turns off, says the clip recovery. You go through the menu, every single clip has a question mark. All of them. Everything. Everything on this camera for the entire night. I tried turning it back on, turned off. Tried turning it back on, turned off. Tried turning it back on, turned off. Once we left the fifth floor, started filming again. Those clips are fine. Should we go to the fifth floor? I'm like, I'm like, like mad. Yeah. Like, it's. Well, yeah. Let's let's go to the. Oh. Like, what do you think about going to the fifth floor with that nope. camera? Nope. 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 First time. Never had that happen. It I, cleared the entire car. And like, battery, brand new battery in, no issues. It's not like the IR GoPros where the battery died and then we lost the clip because like the camera turned off. Oh. Anyways, we're gonna get the gargoyle tape. You're gonna have to get yeah. some recovery software to see if you can. Cover any of those clips. Yeah. We're gonna get the gargoyle tape and then we have to get the last two, which we figured no point in getting them unless it's on camera. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the it's the morgue and uh I was just cafeteria. laying inside the okay. tray. Oh, did you get the tape? I don't know where you put it. Oh, I was reaching around and oh, I was, was feeling yeah. some gross yeah, yeah. stuff, so I didn't reach any farther. Well the good news is we got some stuff, so Alright. Friends, <laughs> you still have the clips? I hope so. <laughs> I think yeah. so. Let's find out by the end of this. Season. Number eleven. That's 11? 11? We got two more. I know where they are. Morgue is 12. The morgue and then on the ball in the cafeteria. That's 13. Where's the, the cafeteria? Ball? Oh, the one the, on the oh, bounty ball. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's the cafeteria? That was the main room with yeah. all the lights. That's where I got in the casket. I got the hot Dude, box. Dude. Oh, going so no, we're missing one more. Where's the coffin. Oh my god, where's the tape? It's in there. Go what, am I supposed to get a splinter? Go in there and find out. Oh, we're gonna get a splitter? <laughs> oh, it's not a ladder. The tape's in there, I promise. Your head's like three inches away from it. Where? It's in there. That's a long distance. Three inches is a lot of us. It's in there. Where? It's, dude, I'm telling you, it's in there. How about this? Will we go get the other two pieces of tape while you look for that one? No. I promise you it's in there. It is not in here. Yes, it is. Keep looking around. Look left, right. Look. I promise you it's like you're literally like inches away from it. It's like I'm about to have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> what Turn babies have you me. seen born, dude? <laughs> you're good. Where's the tape? You can tell he's a true ghost hunter when he thinks his wife's gonna give birth in a sanatorium. <laughs>
Cool. Where's the tape? It's, dude, you're, you're literally. You're so close to it. You see it. Turn on your stomach. You can see it. Should I leave this on while we go get the other ones? Yeah. Where the f is the tape? Where'd you put the tape? I promise you it's in there. Just don't knock the camera over. Elton? Mm -hmm. Where's the tape? Alright, we're gonna go grab the other two pieces. No, but where's the tape? It's in there. Like, no, it's not. Yes, it is. Stomach. There is no tape in yes, there. Yes, there is. No, there is not. I promise you there is. There's no f Yes, there is. There is no tape in here. <laughs> you all saw me put it in there. I watched it. I watched it go But in where there. is it? Huh? Alright, let's go get the other pieces. No, yeah. where's the tape? Grab this camera when you find us. No, Elton. Where's it's in there? I promise you one million percent for sure it's in there and you are inches away from it. There's no f tape in here. Oh that was actually a close one. There you go. You got it on the ball. That's number 12. On the ball. Alright, I'm getting out. These. Say f these. These. This, this, and then the coffin is directly in front of us. The coffin is this way. I think Brandon needs to go full circle. I think it's down on the floor. They probably went up. They probably went up. Let's hope they went up. I walk. I walked the whole first floor. The first floor is. Uh, I walk. No, the first floor is a shoot. Is that Corey? You find it? No! <laughs> no, it's not! Yes, it is! No, it isn't! Yes, it is! There's no tape in there! How much do you want to bet? Three! Three what? Dollars! All right! Wow! Shake on it! I want a three dollar dildo. A three dollar dildo? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's always wanted. <laughs> Down below us, man, I'm telling you. Dude, uh, I swear, down below us is the shoot. Really? Like, down below us is the shoot for sure. So, you guys left me in there by myself. Yes. Yeah. Didn't want to. That was f***ed up. Uh, maybe. You want to Alright. Oh, look at that. Corey, you want to do this? Show me this. Show me this tape. Second. I thought you were screaming at Corey that it's there. He found it. Yeah, he, he got was, it. I, I actually think he was laying on it and he moved it. Oh. And he squished it and it was like right here on the edge. Ah. Oh. <laughs> you laid on it at one point. Uh, I was. It was on the board. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh. Are you good over here? Yeah, it's... Well, I thought you meant like the, the mechanical phone. It's right there. The last piece is right in front of you. Straight up. On the sill. Oh. No! Oh. That. that, my That's friends. Thirteen. Thirteen! <laughs> thirteen thousand steps. Done. And thirteen pieces of tape at 5.01 in the morning. <sighs> yeah. How many times have we walked around this building? A lot. I think I've walked a few miles. Well... Thank you all so much for watching. The sun is going to be rising. Oh yeah. Pretty dang soon. Yeah. Um, by far the most interesting night I think we've ever had and the most frustrating. Yeah. So if you made it this far in this video and you saw all the clips of us for two hours collecting it, the great, we had a recovery. But as of right now, I have no idea if there's <laughs> any footage at all of anything we did for the last two and a half hours of the night. <laughs> Our cameras were good. We're all good. Yeah. And we got some good stuff. No, we got some good stuff, and it Did may you? be gone. It may or may not. Well, we got some be amazing stuff out. with absolutely no tools, no devices. Like, clear as day, doors slamming. No explanation for it at all. I mean, the noises in the tunnel. 
seriously, thank you all for watching this series. Uh, it is bizarre to me how some places we go, we get just amazing activity so and other places it kind of nothing. This so place it is, is very quiet for most of the night. It's like what he said, it's fishing. Yep. Yeah, it's fishing. Sometimes you get an amazing catch and sometimes you get absolutely nothing. I mean, it was quiet up until like 3.30. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it got It was quiet nuts. until it took my camera and silenced it. Yeah. Yeah. For eternity. Yeah. Maybe. But possibly yeah. eternity. Thank you all for watching again. Uh, again, there's the Overnight channel, so check out that for weekly paranormal investigations and other kind of videos in that realm. Uh, the next video after this, I think, is us going to Flip and Fly Fest. <gasps> Oh. So the next video is going to be a polar opposite. We're going to yeah. see about 1,500 people faith planting off of slip and flies. Oh, yeah. you're going to see the most brutal slams you've ever oh witnessed. And then we're doing Lord. Olympic high diving. We're going to train to be Olympic high diver With freestyle high jumpers. Divers. Yeah. And then we're taking over an amusement park. One of the best amusement parks in the country. Yes. And then after that we go to Chernobyl. Oh, oh my god. So, oh actually before that is the Disney castles. Oh, oh that's yeah. right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So amusement park, Disney castles, then Chernobyl. There's so many things. And then high diving, like high diving with Red Bull divers, slip and fly. Just sounds made up. Honestly. Yeah, and then we're doing urban exploring in Ukraine, and then we're going caving in Ukraine, wow. a haunted castle in Ukraine, and we're actually going to Auschwitz, <sighs> and then we're going to Romania, oh, Hoy by Choi, Selena Turda, Banfi Castle, uh, Corvin Castle, Bron Castle. Wait, what? Go to Cor Corbin's Corbin Castle. Corvin. Oh. Or Vin with the V. There's oh, a I'm lot of videos coming up. Like, yeah. And then we're going back to the catacombs. And then we're probably going to Italy for two days. And then we're going to the UK for 15 days. So that's all coming up. TFIL and the Overnight Channel. Stay tuned. God, busy schedule. We need to sleep because we're going to Bobby Mackey's tomorrow. And that's for the Overnight Channel. So. Well, we're going there today. Dude, we're going to yeah. Bobby Mackey's, going to Mackey's <laughs> later today. In 12 hours. Yeah, In less hours. than 12 hours. Yeah. And here's one last note about Waverly Hills. If you don't know the name, it's because they would make the patient wave anytime someone would enter. So that you would see them all on the balcony and they'd be like, Hello, welcome to Waverly Hills, where we wave! And that became the name Waverly Hills. That sounds legit. Is that really how it got its name? <laughs> yeah. Actually, they're on the hill and they're like, Hey, make sure to wave. Like, wave. Like, like be orderly and wave. And then they named And the... then they were like, Waverly Hills. That's really cool.